Are you a morning person? I'm a morning person, You're yes. A morning person. A morning so you enjoy person. doing stuff in the morning? I love doing stuff early in the morning, mm -hmm. and I'm also a very late night person. Um, I have very few hours to sleep, I think. I think you're very bubbly. You have a lot of energy. Where yes, do you get yes. your energy from? I don't know. How would I say that? I think uh, just with the comfort knowing that I've got a pure soul. Mm -hmm. I have a clean conscience. Mm -hmm. And I have a passion and determination to defend the masses and the poor and, you know, the rights of the oppressed and the persecuted and the voiceless, really. Mm -hmm. So, you know, with such a pure heart and a pure mind and a clean soul, knowing you're un untouched with any form of corruption of har or harming anyone mm -hmm. or hurting anybody's feelings, really. That's the energy I That's think I have. That's what gives yeah. you the energy. I think that goes All right, and we'll me. get to that in just a bit. But tell me, who's Nazlin Omar? In a, 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 who do you view yourself as? Apart from uh, Robin Hood, from what you've uh, described <laughs> yourself, you know, saving the masses of the people. Oh, but yeah, that's yeah a good what, one. what else? Um, I can say Nazlin Omar is. Um, I have committed my life towards living for the sake of others for the last 23 years. And uh, I'm globally renowned for my work on uh, human rights, good governance, HIV AIDS, peace, interfaith harmony. I'm globally renowned for my work on global peace. In fact, I was the only woman invited by the King of Spain to host the Second World Congress for rabbis and imams from Middle East peace talks. Mm -hmm. I actually got the imams of, uh, and, uh, of Gaza and the uh, rabbis of Haifa to embrace. Mm -hmm. So I took a lead in that meeting as well. So many universities have written about me and known to me. They haven't published about me, University of Pennsylvania, University of Michigan, University of Washington. If you Google gender and culture, the limit of rights, for example, that's one of the books. I've done a lot of work on this. and. Uh, I think I would say that my life is a mission from God mm -hmm. to serve him as his slave and servant of humanity. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm passionate about that. I have uh, many accounts, maybe bank accounts, but they're empty. I have refused to why amass wealth. Many, why, why do you have many? Oh, because a little bit comes in and then it goes back out again. That's what I mean. I've committed my life towards living for the sake of others. Okay. So when I get a little bit of money, even 50,000, 100,000, I go in the grassroots somewhere, identify as community-based organizations, bring them together, widows or youth groups, and start an income-generating activity. Somebody could ground. misunderstand you for being proud and blowing your own trumpet. I mean, I know you're giving me your CV and your... Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to them? Well, I've you had, just I've asked had... me who is Nazir Umar, so don't ask me if you're not ready to hear it. No, I'm ready to hear <laughs> it. Yeah, it's only I'm that... The thing about only blowing your own trumpet. You know, why do you own it in the first place? That's all I was said. <laughs> why do you own a so trumpet in the first place if you're not going to blow it? And anyway, I think Kenyans know me. I have a massive, um, phenomenal website. It even frightens me when I visit. It's more like an archive, nazinumar.com. Please visit. And it's an archive of what I've done, what the world says about me, what the beneficiaries of my activities and my mission on life say about me. It's not about me projecting myself. It's the world saying something about Nazlin. Mm -hmm. And that's the angle I took when uh, my team created my website uh, about two years ago. So that was just a background to what I do. My life is a mission on God, from God. When my last born son, I have four kids, two boys, two girls, Omar. When Omar was born, uh, just before he was born, actually, I received a form of... Uh, not a message, because uh, prophethood ended. It was a form of knowledge from God, you know, dream while I was awake, really, that I must serve God. I must uh, commit my life to him. I must uh, be at his service. I must speak the truth, however bitter it may be. I must be a voice of the oppressed, and I must go out there to the world and project Islam in the true colors that it is, not uh, clear the misconceptions, and basically speak and defend anyone, whoever they are, wherever they may be. So I don't choose religion, I don't choose color, I don't choose creed. Mm -hmm. I'm a voice of everybody. So I'm globally renowned for my work on that, really. So okay. the media, you know, I, but I, the media has projected, the standard group, I must thank you, at least in the past, over 10 years ago, you profiled me twice in two or three page spreads. Nation did that as well. I've been the most profiled woman in Kenya long before I entered politics because of my work in the civil society. Well, it, it speaks for itself. It speaks for itself. My All right, and, I, and I'll itself. come to the political end of it and some of the statements yes. that you have, have put on your social media handles and all that, <laughs> but I'll come to that in just a bit. Yeah. Uh, but tell me a little bit about your upbringing. Where did you grow up? Which school oh, yes. did you go to? I was born to? in Isli, mm -hmm. Section 3. I'm an Isli child. I was, I was raised in Isli. Um, I'm Nairobi based. I'd like you raising that. Actually, I have, uh, I'm a true Kenyan beyond tribe. Um, I would like to say that. Uh, let me give you a bit of my history there. Mm -hmm. My great grandmother, my mother's grandmother, was Kalinjin. Her name was Lango from Kapsabet. My father's grandmother, her name was um, Nzisa from Kitui, the only daughter of the famous chief called Sla. They were married to local settlers. My father's grandfather was Umar Khan. He was a uh, colonel in the British Army as a doctor. 
and he fought the British army and he defended the rights of the oppressed and the poor and he became a champion for the, for the local people. So, and on my mother's side, Lango, who was married to a local Indian as well, settler, and um, they were freedom fighters. During the rebellion, the Mama rebellion, they, their home back there in the Nandi area was raised. You know those old colonial houses which were raised? They used to host the Mau Mau and change their arms and host their ammunition and their arms and give them food. My mother remembers as a little girl being carried by the Mau Mau red eyes and dreadlocks and all that. And my mother spoke 13 different dialects, Kalenjin, like water. My father spoke, spoke Kamba, Kikuyu, all these languages. So yes, I'm a true daughter you're, of the you're, nation. You're, you're born, bred, and Kenyan. Look, and you know, my children have Maasai origin from Namanga and, uh, Kit, uh, and uh, uh, wow, Kajado. Then you definitely are a representative of the I'm whole country as it was. In fact, I am the solution of the tribal poison that 